Good evening. How is everybody doing tonight? Great. How are you? Awesome. I am fantastic. Great. Um, we'd like to welcome you guys here to our Thursday night webinar featuring one of our fantastic South Carolina financial literacy master teachers who I've known for quite a while, Erica Marshall, and she is um, a finance challenge extraordinaire, an amazing teacher who is going to share some wonderful tricks of the trade with you guys tonight. Uh, my name is Amanda Stigelbauer, and I want to welcome you on behalf of SE Economics. I am the project director and I work um, part-time with the council and I'm also a full-time high school teacher at Blythewood High School. And we have another person on the call tonight, Rhonda Fulmer. Um, Hi everybody. Right. Welcome. Welcome. I, I just slipped in here. Um, Amanda didn't know I was coming, but I just, I don't get an opportunity very often to jump in. So here I am just listening and enjoying <laughs> learning. <laughs> I count it for the organization as well as a, a number of other hats that I wear. And that's kind of how we roll with a small nonprofit. Everybody has to wear lots of different hats, but we all love it and enjoy it and um, certainly love to work together to, to our mission of helping our students and teachers be more economically and financially literate. So tonight I'm gonna turn it over to Erica and she is gonna share a plethora of knowledge and lots of strategies to help you win but not beat her teams in the finance challenge. <laughs> 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 so I'm going to turn it over to her. I'm so excited. Well, thank you. I guess I'll start sharing my screen now since uh, yeah. that's what I need to do. So, let's make sure we have some sound checks here. And I think we'll get there. All right. So I need to move y'all away so I can get in my presenter mode. I'll probably bounce back and forth um, from presenter mode. Ideally. Okay. So as Amanda said, I'm Erica Marshall, and I've been teaching for about 28 years now. Um, I teach business education at Beaufort High School. I am a South Carolina Master Naturalist, and recently felt happy to have been a member of the first cohort for the, it's the peak certification. It's the Palmetto Environmental Educator Certification. So it um, doesn't have a lot to do with business, but if you could actually hear my outside world, you would hear like the doors open and wrens are chirping and, you know, it's all about outside. And that's why it's kind of hard to sit in this chair sometimes uh, recently. I have enjoyed um, the spring and the summer. But anyway, so I've been teaching about 28 years. Um, combination of homeschool, which I homeschooled my three children, and then I went to um, the traditional public school, and now I find myself, like y'all, um, teaching virtually. So it's definitely um, an interesting transition. Um, I have started at home with children, and I'm now back at home with children. It's just that they aren't running around, and I'm not... Anyway, so I'm currently teaching fundamentals of business marketing and finance at Beaufort High, and um, I have three preps that are exactly the same. I've got a whole lot of um, friends and teachers that are not teaching uh, the same thing, and I do commiserate with them. Um, as Amanda said, um, I have had some successful students and teams play the finance challenge. Um, in the fall of last year, I had the Sugar Bears team of four students place third, and we were so amazed and tickled that checks for $25 came to them around Christmas time. It was maybe just a little after our Christmas break. And then in the spring, I was fortunate enough to have both a first place team and a third place team. So. The first place team, every single person on the team got a $50 check. And then anyone who was in the third place um, got a $25 check. And I might add that um, they incentivized the teachers as well. And so I netted $100 last year for having them participate in the finance challenge. So that was definitely appreciated. Thank you very much, South Carolina Economics. 
all good. Um, but anyway, so I believe the finance challenge is a way to incorporate a friendly competition among the students while allowing their teams to develop collaboration and decision-making skills. Um, I let the students choose their own teams. I might make occasional suggestions uh, for someone who's unsure about doing teamwork. Um, occasionally, I do have students who really don't want to participate in a team. And I just do my level best to try to bolster and support them and give them some courage and, um, you know, maybe let them choose the team name or, or you know, just try to get some collabor collaborative um, practices there. But another thing that I really feel is important um, when you've got a team that's doing well um, is to market it. And part of what I teach right now is the marketing segment. And, you know, if you do end up winning, and as Amanda said, beating me, um, you, you can probably do it. Um, I really highly suggest that you reach out to your morning news show, um, your school newsletter, your school webpage, um, local newspapers, and your book. And just, you know, make the kids feel um, like they've done something really fabulous because they actually have. They've earned some money for taking a test, which is amazing. Um, okay. So um, the objectives here today uh, for what we're doing is going to be, um, I really would, I can't make you, but I would like to make you register for the finance challenge. Um, we're going to be using some real world activities to build some student engagement. And then um, to try to locate some resources to improve financial literacy and the decision making. So um, what I wondered is um, how many of you have participated in this uh, before? Um, I guess maybe we could go to the chat. Let me see how I can do this. I don't know if I can, oh no, sorry guys. Um, I guess if I escape my full screen, maybe I can access, I, I don't think I can access the chat when I'm sharing, right? Is that what we determined? We can access, it might be confusing, but um, I can certainly monitor it and take, take okay. notes. So, so what I'd really like to know in the chat, um, and I'll probably have to stop sharing for a second so I can read it, is to kind of get your feedback on who has, um, participated in the finance challenge in the past. And if, if you have participated, then um, what to what level? So we have a couple of have nots. Okay. Register so Amanda has. Participate. I have. Okay. And you won it, right? Haven't you? Haven't you had some kids win it? My kids, I think, placed second and third, maybe. I yeah. Don't recall them winning first place in the finance challenge. Right. You probably have some econ challenge winners too. I'm we have sure. econ challenge winners. <laughs> um, okay, so most of y'all have not participated, um, and so hopefully we'll get you some stuff here that. Um, is going to be helpful to you to educate those children to do a, a good job and clean up on some cash. Um, all right, so we've got the objectives. Let me go back to my presenter mode. So it's a little bit bigger for you. All right, so with the South Carolina standards, um, they are voluminous. But for, um, I decided to choose one on financial responsibility and decision making for tonight's slideshow and presentation. So basically, the goal would be to make responsible financial decisions and consumer choices consistent with one's financial plan, including decision making strategies on purchasing. So I wanted to keep it all together for you um, with regard to the standards. I don't know if there's some new teachers here or, um, you know, teachers that just haven't really navigated this website. It's our Department of Education website. Um, it, it can be overwhelming, but I wanted to put this link in for you um, specific to financial literacy and give you some 
of their suggestions that I have absolutely used on a daily basis. Um, first of all, can't say enough good about MGPF. By the way, if you can see my pen, uh, there we go, it's backwards, but it says MGPF. And I got sent this for going and doing professional developments with them, and you can get that too. Um, so this is one of the ones that I use daily. And um, if you're familiar with the site, I'm just gonna try to reacquaint you with it. If you're not familiar with it, it is amazing. Um, I like this one a lot. It drops right into Google. Um, it's got, a, well, we'll go, I'll go over it in more detail a little bit later. Um, but anyway, so other ones that I like, sorry, I didn't mean to do it that way, um, are the Council for, on Economic Education. And this one is another one that has resources. Um, I can tell you that a couple of years ago when I did the stock market game, I got this for free and it was great. I know that there's an updated one. I think this is a four and a half. I think they have a five now. So anyway, so they've got all kinds of resources and um, really appreciate um, this from when I did the stock market game training. Um, another one that I find, and from time to time, people will send me a link and say, oh, you've got to do this. And I'm thinking, I've got to explore this and teach myself. But honestly, like with some of the ones here, like NextGen, um, that it's very, very easy. And if I can do it, you can do it. Um, obviously, if you're here, you, if you're here tonight, you've been on this website. And of course, there's our fabulous South Carolina econ. And I appreciate, appreciate both of y'all for being here and letting me do this. Um, but they've helped me round the clock. Um, you know, they, they're always there. Um, Amanda Chandler, always there to answer a question I might have, um, you know, help me get signed up for some of their contests. Um, just that, you know, fabulous help. And um, we'll go over the contests that's in this area right here in a little bit. And then down a little further on the standards, I find that, um, some of these are duplicated, but the Federal Reserve uh, has some really, really good information and um, did a professional development in the summer with y'all and really enjoyed, you know, just getting some insight into it and sharing it with my students. But again, all these can be accessed on um, the link that I put in the slideshow, and y'all will get that. Um, so, hold on. Okay, um, the other ones that I wanted to point out um, down here is South Carolina Jumpstart. And um, this one also, sorry, it looks like my internet's kind of going a little slowly, um, is also, a resource for you. And I wanted to point out that um, when, when going through, um, we've got Chandler Jordan right down here. We've got lots of great people. Um, Dana DePue and um, Yolanda, she was the one who did the um, discussion this summer on the Fed up there in Charlotte. So um, got some awesome people on this that are, are great resources for you and they would not be on our state education webpage if they were not supportive of all of us. So, um, our agenda for tonight, I guess I need to move this bar up a little bit, um, will be basically a finance challenge overview. Um, we've got something called a fact bag activity, and that's going to be done in the breakout room. So I'm going to give you all some links, or Amanda's going to help me give you all some links, and uh, they'll be placed in the chat, and I want you all to maybe work on that a little bit. Um, 
We're going to navigate the South Carolina Finance Challenge site specifically. Uh, I'd like to show you exactly where you can go to register easily. And um, I'm going to go over some practice test questions in a breakout room. Uh, a little bit of resource overview, specifically with Money Power, WISE, and NGPF, and then a Money Power um, quiz. Um, additionally, I'm going to include an Ed Puzzle activity. It'll hopefully um, take you back to your fact bag activity that you did at the beginning, and then a little bit of a review um, for an evaluation survey. Is that right, Amanda? There will be a survey afterward? Yes, okay. Yes, ma'am. All right. Yes, ma'am. I'm honestly pressing the button, but it's not doing anything. Ah, technology. It happened to me today, too. Really? Mm -hmm. Your slides that wouldn't forward? Yep. Our Google yeah. crashed, actually, um, last week. Okay. Let me find it again. Let me, let me share it on a smaller, lesser level. Maybe it'll be cooperative if I minimize it. It doesn't want to be small. Interesting. This is really, really strange. Okay. okay. Oh, there we go. Let me take it back. Um, okay, yeah. All right. So, um, the fact bag activity. Well, let, let's maybe go with a little um, finance challenge overview first, because that's what I promised you to do. Um, okay, so basically the overview, and this comes straight from the page, Middle and high school teachers from public, charter, private, and home schools um, across South Carolina are invited to register student teams of three to five. Um, I usually like four because they um, drop the lowest score, but three to five, it's up to you. Um, anyway, members to compete the personal finance challenge. The personal finance challenge enables students to demonstrate their knowledge of personal financial literacy in an online competition with other middle and high school students from across the state of South Carolina. The following topics are tested. Earnings income, protecting and insuring, uh, using credit, buying goods and services, and saving and financial investing. So I actually don't recall, Amanda, if were we able to take the finance challenge after March when we were like all doing virtual? I just I, that's we we were weren't we yeah i just couldn't remember the timeline if i was like you know making them get it done before we got out or if i was able to make them get it done when we were out yeah we were able to allow them. i think um the organization that hosts the finance challenge at the national level they were able to make some modifications because of covid um that allowed more participation by schools as well yeah but generally we have to have our students take the finance challenge within a three hour window of each other. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, so yes, yeah, we did that and they got it done. I was, I was impressed with the students, so I was happy to work that. Um, anyway, since I'm highlighting the importance of financial responsibility and decision making, I thought it would be fun to share my project that I do with my classes. And so that's what this one is. Um, it's called a fact bag. And, um, it says, here's a project I give my students the first week of school. It offers creativity plus choices, which equal, I love to grade that kind of stuff. I, I, it's not a cookie cutter kind of project. Um, but anyway, so you are supposed to think of a bag, a backpack, a duffel bag, or a purse that you either own or dream of owning. And then you're going to write something that you know about financial literacy or maybe something that you would like to know about it. Um, my question for this sample that I'm going to show you is um, related to, well, perhaps if you buy it, a, this bag, how long would it take you to pay it off using a credit card? Um, then you write this factor question on the bag. So um, there are lots of options. Um, our school does have the Adobe Suite products, um, so we can use Photoshop. It's been paid for. Um, Google Draw, Paint 3D, Inkscape, Gink. GIMP, Pixar, Canva, they're all free. And um, when you want to get creative to make, uh, have your students make a poster or a flyer or infographic, um, 
many of these are, are really good options. But so for tonight, um, the link that I'm going to want dropped into the chat, please and thank you, is going to be this one for Canva. And um, this is one that I have students sign up like the first week of school. I really want them to, to create an account because we do a lot of posters, brochures, um, flyers, infographics, as I as I mentioned, and then this back back then being one. So um, so anyway, they have a lot of different things. You're not going to have to um, you know pay for anything, and if you already have a Canva account, that would be awesome. But um, so that's um, that, and then the second one is a link that I give the students if they don't know anything about why they're in the class, which is fine. Um, this one I found to be um, about 26 different fun facts. And I like this one because the first image is actually like an infographic, um, which is you know a visual combined with um, words. So it's got some fun questions like how much does a million dollars weigh or how to go broke with $10 billion. So it's basically got just some fun facts up to 26, and um, I think it's interesting. And if you've seen it before, I suggest you use it. Okay, so let's see. All right, so here is my um, bag. And my question is, how long will it take to pay for this using a credit card? So, Amanda, can they unmute themselves um, to maybe give me an idea of what they think the bag is worth, what it costs? Absolutely. Raise your guess. I had some students. What was that? Anyone want to guess? Two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars. Okay. We have four hundred and fifty in the chat box, followed by three hundred. Okay. Oh my. Five easy payments of forty nine. One thousand. Okay. Oh my. Someone thinks it's expensive. One fifty. It's a picnic basket. One fifty. Oh. Anybody else want to wager a guess? Is that everybody? We have a thousand. Right. So, I found this, so I found this um, cute bag on Farfetch. It's a luxury website. And it's actually, it's, an, it's a pre-owned, and that's okay, I don't mind, an Hermes bag. Um, it's just, it's called the Kelly Picnic Bag. And it, it'll cost you $82,701. So it's kind of expensive, but I really, really want it. And after setting my heart on this fabulous Hermes bag that only costs $82,701, get this, they are not even gonna charge me any tax on it. I'm thankful. Um, anyway, I, just, I decided to try to estimate what my payments would be like. I also wondered how long it might take me to pay for it if I only paid the minimum due. Lastly, I wanted to see how much it would actually cost on credit. So we've got this credit calculator. And again, this might be fun to drop into the chat as well. Um, if I pay the minimum payment, it's going to cost me about 2000 a month. And that's 42 years. Um, and in the end, it's going to cost me 123000 and change. So... Um, Kind of crazy, right? Are we laughing? Are we thinking that this is uh, really real? So anyway, so ideally what I'd like y'all to do is go into your breakout room for a bit of time, about six minutes or so, um, five or six, something like that, and see if you can navigate the Canvas site, um, maybe to somebody to come back and report. Um, what did I say? The person with the longest hair. I think I was thinking that that would be an idea for one person um, to come back. So. Um, anyway, and then we've got the bank card calculator, but um, I had a student today. He actually guessed that the bag was going to cost $2,000, and then he said, but who would pay that much for that ugly old bag? And I was like, okay. <laughs> um, but anyway, so um, 
I think if we can get these into the chat. Um, and Erica, yeah. if you will um, transfer, sorry, there was some weird sounds. If you will transfer, go to my picture and transfer me to the host, I'll create the breakout rooms for you. Oh, okay. So, let me do so um, do the three dots thing again and make me host. And I'm putting those in the chat box right now, the links that you have. Wow, this technology is something. You know, this company has been around for like five or ten years, right? So much fun. Okay, actually, this, those are already in the chat box. The bank rate and Canva. And um, what I'll do is I'll set you guys up into two different breakout rooms. And how long do you want to give these folks, Erica? I feel like five minutes. Okay. Did you say five? Yeah, five is good. Okay, very good. Okay, so I'm going to create the breakout rooms and it's going to give you guys um, the option to go to your room and you guys will discuss those things. But the one thing I wanted to tell y'all before you go, please click the links in the chat box before you go because the chat box I think disappears once you get into the breakout rooms. So click on the bank rate calculator and then well canva.com. Okay, so I'm gonna create these bad boys. And I'm gonna open them. And y'all have a lovely time.
Hi, Amanda. Okay, so I think I have to get back to screen sharing. Host? Okay. All right, I think Amanda, I think you option at the bottom, do you? Um, say it again. Do you have an option at the bottom to share your screen now? Uh, let's see, it looks green. Green is good, green is good. It says host disabled participant screen sharing. So do I need to click on you or click on me? One second. Now you should be able to. Okay. Yep. There we go. Brilliant. Um, all right. Let's get to another slide. Maybe I need to get to my other slide before I screen share because it doesn't want to go. It doesn't want to go big. All right. Sorry. Okay. All right, just a little technology here. All right, so next, y'all can see that, right? Um, so next, we are gonna go over basically the, the finance challenge. Um, the finance challenge is an opportunity for students to demonstrate their knowledge of personal finance by competing with other students across the state in multiple choice examinations. Um, and as I mentioned, my students have been pleasantly surprised by um, being incentivized with cash in the form of a check and maybe a little bit of fame and notoriety at the school and in the yearbook. Um, so we've got um, basically some of the rules and how it works. Um, it's actually about to begin, so I want to make sure y'all take a moment to put this in your calendar because I'm throwing down the challenge um, October 5th through November 29th. And Amanda, we're still going to be able to do it. I guess we should be, we should possibly be back by in school by then. Um, so we'll probably be in class and uh, just kind of structure your day to, to make sure you get it done. Um, anyway, so. In order to register, ideally, I would like to make you register right now. And I would like Chandler to get like uh, 10 emails or however many of us there are here right now um, so that y'all are all going to participate. So on the Finance Challenge page, again, it's on the SE Economics. It's one of their contests. Um, I'll just drop this down in case you're not familiar. Stock market game, love it, um, play it haven't won it. Um, invest right, definitely do it. Um, I have to say I had a third place national winner and uh, first place South Carolina, two, two first place South Carolina winners, one in fall and one in spring. Haven't done this, that's more for middle school. This is what we're talking about. And then this one, um, Amanda brings up on that one, I'm sure. So, but teacher registration is right here. It may take you a little bit of time, but I promise it's not as time consuming as developing a slow. So it's um, a lot more fun to register and you're just gonna put in your information. They will give you a login. Um, I've got the link again in the slideshow. We can put the link in the chat if you really wanna, um, what do you call, multitask right now and register right now. Um, but anyway, so once you get your registration, you will have a login. Um, your students will have um, numbers, uh, like account numbers, and that's how they will access their codes and their, their test. Um, you don't want to give them their access numbers until you're ready to have them take the test because um, you wanna make sure that they're ready to take the test. Uh, okay, so um, let's see. We are looking for the registration and um, we've got some questions. So on here, um, where did we go? Practice. So they actually have some practice questions for you. So you can kind of get an idea 
of what the score might, you know, the high score can be, what the average score is. Um, so this is something that, that you even can do uh, right now. And um, so um, if I think I think I was thinking of putting y'all in a breakout room, but I don't know that we're gonna really do that because do you, do you think we have time to do that to let them go and do a, a breakout question on their own? I'm I'm kind of concerned that we may not be able to have the time. Um, anyway, so. This, on that registration form um, that I was just going over, under those practice questions, you'll see questions like this, and I took the screenshot. So I would like a volunteer to maybe read this question and tell me the answer. I'm gonna kind of put somebody on the spot, if you will. And if there are no volunteers um, you know, that wanna speak out, maybe just put it in the chat. Are y'all able to read that? I could go back in the present mode. Can you make it a little bit bigger? I can. I know I have like my, I, I've gone like right up to the screen to try to figure this out. Um, okay, here we go. So as you're reading the question and trying to determine the answer and then I'll get that volunteer or those people in the chat. Um, it basically, this is a 20 question sample test. It, it tells you, um, you know, you've got 19 more. It is gonna give you an idea of how much time you have and then the student name. And um, I, don't, I don't know what that personal finance challenge is. I don't know what, where that came from, but anyway, so I guess that's just my number. Anyway, anyone wanna wager a guess? In the chat? It's the third one. Okay. <laughs> oh no, we're back up. Okay, that's this. We're kind of skipping this. Sorry. Um, where did it go? Sorry. Yeah. Okay. It is. So this one, this practice test does not give you any feedback on it. Um, so you get, you're going to find out in the end what your score was, but it doesn't give you any immediate feedback as you're taking the test. We're going to go over another one, another resource that I use um, that does give instant feedback. Um, again, I was thinking that we were going to maybe take the time to go through this, uh, the 20 question test. Um, you can access it. I'm just thinking that we're probably not going to have enough time to do it. But I really am a believer that these practice tests help sharp, sharpen test taking skills and knowledge. So I really, really um, challenge you whether you do the finance challenge or not, go run through the test, take a screenshot of the questions, and then use that as part of a tutorial for your students um, on a daily basis or you know, a couple of times, just to get them familiar with that, um, with some of the questions. And they are varied. Um, they're gonna encompass all those areas that um, the finance challenge takes in. A lot of times I find some of my students are really not very knowledgeable at all on insurance. And um, it's, it's just one that I find that they tend to have a weakness on. Um, all right, so these are the links that I use the most. Um, I find the resources that work and engage student learning. Um, Money Power is definitely one of my go-tos for, um, online tests and they right here you go to the test your knowledge right now we're not logged in um i actually forgot what my login is i thought i never would forget it but i actually did um anyway so test your knowledge this is one that you do not have to be a member you don't have to be um part of what um, money power does you can take a basic 10 question test uh, by filling in your zip code, your city, and your birth year. Um, and then you just say if you're a student or a teacher. Um, if you do not have this login ID up here, it will allow you to move forward without it, which I like. Um, so, Another one that I like 
is, hold on a second. Sorry guys. Um, these are some of the perks that you have with, um, you know, be signing up with an account with the Money Power. Um, you get to take the 10 question, questions and quizzes. Um, you also have a choice, the students have a choice of selecting which area, like if I want them to really work on insurance for 10 questions, or if I want them to work on banking or credit or um, debt, um, mortgages, things like that, um, I can select that for them and uh, I definitely like it. Um, so here's an example of a money power question. And um, if, would one of y'all like to answer that or answer it in the chat? The Fed is short for the Federal Reserve System, Congress, FBI, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. A. It's A. A, yeah. All right. And so the reason I like this one is because it gives you that feedback on your answer and um, with an explanation. Um, whether you got it right or that it'll, it'll tell you if you got it wrong too. Um, and so that's why I really like this link. Again, it will be in the um, slideshow for you. So WISE is another one that I like. Um, this is the one, Amanda, that you all use for certification for the master teacher, correct? Yeah. And it's, it's industry um, recognized. So, um, so the state of South Carolina decided to use it. Anyway, so here's the link for this. Um, they've got that exclamation point in their logo and um, you can get signed up. They will probably require that your principal get involved, just sign a simple form to, you know, make sure that you're legit a teacher and that your principal is on board with you doing that. Um, again, it's an additional responsibility. Um, it is, I don't think it's overly time consuming, but I like it when some of my students walk out of class with a certificate from them. It, it to me, it's nice. Um, all right, the last one that I like a lot is the Next Gen Personal Finance. And I like it because it utilizes Google and is so easy to link to Google Classroom face-to-face -face or virtual. Um, and their website, they do a lot of things for teachers. Um, they do a lot of things for students. And it's not going quickly. I took some screenshots just in case we had technology issues. So um, anyway, so if you have ever navigated this site or not navigated, you, the first thing they do alphabetically is arcade, and the first thing is games. And my students played these last spring when we were out. Um, they loved them. They had a great time with it. They've got some curriculum units, um, and then they've got a lot of teacher um, professional development. Like I said, they sent me this pen. I actually got a black and an orange one with some other stuff. They call it swag. Um, anyway. So I like this site a lot. I post um, my question of the day from them every day. It's random, but it's um, conversational. The Uber game, probably my students' favorite game on decision-making. Um, you can go through, um, again, the link is gonna be in the slideshow. But you can go through and play the game and you have to make decisions based on what kind of cellular service plan you want, what kind of, um, what kind of car are you going to drive, like a van or a Prius, um, things like that. So it really gives you some decision making. When I played, I made $30 in 20 minutes. I thought that was pretty good. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, it said I drive for four hours, so that was my first fare. But it gives you some real world things that are basically um, inspired by real Uber drivers. And I've definitely been talking to students about the gig economy lately. Um, anyway, anyway NGF, NGPF has random financial literacy questions of the day in a variety of areas that are current and relevant. Um, I think yesterday we talked about people age 18 to 29 still living at home with their parents and why. 
So again, it's random. Um, I like random. I kind of don't work well in a box, uh, even though I'm sitting in a box. I think I referenced that earlier. Um, anyway, so we'll run over some of these things um, with regard to financial literacy. Um, it refers to the basic skills people need to manage money and make financial decisions. People are said to be financially literate when they understand money, income, and taxes, budgeting, banking, saving, investing, credit, insurance, retirement, planning, and managing money for economic self-sufficiency and to build wealth. That is a lot. Um, I don't usually start my first day of school with students with that paragraph, um, for sure, but we get there. Anyway, financial literacy begins early in life and is a lifelong pursuit. Think about the first time you learned something about money. Um, that was actually an NGPF question of the day, like who was the first person that told you about money? And, you know, I was like, I think it was something like when I got a money from the tooth fairy. Um, anyway, basic financial literacy is essential and empowering. It increases social and economic equality. It allows people to take control of their financial lives. Through financial education, we can create informed and responsible citizens who can make wise financial plans and decisions. Sounds like a light at the end of the tunnel. Anyway, so um, again, we'll just see on this. I did do some screenshots. Um, Ed puzzles, love Ed puzzles. Um, I get them from NGPF actually. Um, I set them up, and depending on the the makeup of the class, I might actually put them in for a grade. Um, but the the group that's in this Ed puzzle is called Two Cents, and I always ask the students what Two Cents means and why the actors chose that name. So again, for some out of the box thoughts, um, love to hear what they're thinking of. A lot of them related to the, the rapper 50 Cent. So um, anyway, I think that's amusing. All right, but anyway, so this Ed Puzzle is um, basically ways people are dumb with money. Um, I don't know, yeah, maybe I'll show it. I'll maybe show you a little bit of it, let's do that. Um, again, I think I plan to put y'all in breakout rooms, but I get really, really nervous when there's like five, six minutes to go, and this one is seven minutes, so. <laughs> All right, hopefully we'll be able to hear this. We'll maybe do the first one together. Imagine a person who always makes the right financial decisions. Let's call her Penny. Penny approaches every money problem with perfect logic and reason. She never gets emotional or impulsive and always knows what's in her own best interests. You're probably thinking that Penny sounds imaginary and kind of obnoxious. But for over a hundred years, most economists believe that the world was made up entirely of pennies. That you and I and everyone you know always made the best decisions to maximize our happiness. As crazy as that sounds, that was the conventional wisdom until a small group of economists and psychologists started to question whether Penny actually existed at all. One of them, Richard Thaler, won the Nobel Prize last year for showing that not only do humans make financial mistakes, they make predictable mistakes. He joked about calling his research dumb stuff people do. But today, it's called behavioral economics, and it has changed public policy across the world. Thaler showed that humans can't quite remove their emotions from the decision-making process, but being able to predict these money mistakes might help you avoid them. Okay, so what Ed puzzles do, if you've not used them, is um, they break it up. They, they, um, they give you a little bit of a tutorial, and then they give you a question that relates to what they've said and um, a choice. So if some brave soul would like to select the best definition of behavioral economics, we will go with it. I, I have to select it for you. If y'all were in the um, little chat room or the breakout room, y'all would be able to do this on your own. So, a volunteer, either live or in the chat. I say C. Perhaps it is C. Let's have a look. 
Well, what do you know? It is just that. Behavioral economics analyzes psychological insights such as emotional, social factors, and the impact economic decisions. All right, so. Um, all right, so that is a fun little thing, a fun little puzzle to show. Um, and it's about seven or so minutes long. Um, basically, like I said, I took some screenshots of some of the other questions. One was uh, delving into the endowment effect, and another was the sunk cost fallacy. So, um, you know, I kind of bought myself an expensive bag a little while ago on credit, and I just kind of felt like I might be experiencing some of these things. So some questions um, after, you know, with regard to the fact bag activity, and if you were to combine it with something like that Ed puzzle, um, you could ask questions about the, what is behavioral finance? Um, what is the endowment effect? What is the sunk cost fallacy? And then what is the transaction utility? Those are all covered in that Ed puzzle. And then lastly, a question I have for all of you is when do you plan to register and take the finance challenge? Um, got a little debrief? Ooh, like two minutes. Um, okay, so imagine a seesaw with spending and savings as the riders. How much do you spend? Personal finance is trying to manage your own expenses based on the money you are earning. Living within your means is a method of managing spending. Um, then we've got maybe how much do you save? A false sense of sa savings can occur when you have debt on credit cards with high interest while boasting that your fact bag or a low interest savings account is full, and I mean dripping with cash. Um, here's our little seesaw visual, and yes, those are children, but no, there's spending and savings. That's what I want you to think of. So making decisions regarding how to balance savings and spending on your wants and needs is like riding a seesaw. You have to decide if the extremes are worth the risk and enjoyment. Breaking even is hard work and a balancing act. And so decision time, are you ready to compete in the finance challenge? The links are here again. I've put them in a number of times just to drive the point home. Y'all need to sign up and get with South Carolina Econ. All right, Amanda, is this you? Erica, thank you so, so, so much. You did a fabulous job of advertising for the challenge, but also imparting to our wonderful teachers who participated um, how to be successful in the finance challenge. Um, and as really you highlighted, it's, it's one of those games that you really just have to seek out your resources and continue to practice, practice, practice. Um, and if nothing else, our students get really good um, test taking strategies and they certainly learn things that they would have never learned before. Um, so we are just so proud of you and your students and it's always wonderful to have um, an expert in the field share with us. So we appreciate you. Um, Erica was presenting on behalf of SC Economics with our partnership with the State Treasurer's Office through the South Carolina Financial Literacy Master Teacher Program. So as Erica mentioned earlier, she is in one of the first cohorts, the first cohort um, of our South Carolina Financial Literacy Master Teachers, which seeks to find teachers like you guys um, who are passionate about imparting financial education knowledge, not only to students, but are willing to share it with other teachers. Um, and this program is generously funded by the Future Scholar 529 plan. Um, and we incentivize teachers like Erica, um, not only to um, engage with their students in personal finance education, um, but also we pay them money to do so. Um, so from, from the first level to the top level, um, the bronze level, um, and I see Karen is also part of cohort one as well, um, Vicki. So we ha I know we have, um, we have several people on here tonight, Tamika, um, and if I miss anybody, y'all just kind of um, <laughs> let me know. I'm trying to scroll through the Zoom screen right quick. Um, but anyways, our teachers are incentivized between $500 and $1,500 um, by the end of year three. 
to help promote financial literacy and conduct professional development with teachers in their schools and districts and even statewide as Erica is doing right now. So we'd love to have anybody in our next cohorts. We actually have a couple of spots in the second cohort and then our applications will go live for cohort three in January. So I have put the link to the evaluation for you guys in the chat box and I will put this here again for you guys. If y'all will please fill that out um, and give us your honest feedback on um, your programs tonight. Um, also, please remember that teachers who participate in the South Carolina Financial Literacy Master Teacher trainings, um, if you take and use some of the things that Erica has showed you guys through her presentation with your students in a financial literacy lesson, um, complete some pictures and show us some student work, um, of course that can also be pictures, then you could qualify for a $100 stipend by doing so. Um, so I will also place the link to that form in the chat box and that form will also go out in our follow-up email tomorrow, tomorrow morning or afternoon. So be on the lookout for an email from Chandler with that information as well. Any questions? Ooh, it's 8 of yeah, we try to stay yeah. real like on time, <laughs> but yeah, 803, we're, we're good. Um, and certainly if you guys don't have any questions, just thank you again for joining us tonight and um, for all you do for our students and other teachers in South Carolina. Thank you. And I'm going to thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Erica. Thank you, Rhonda. So the incentive link is here. This is different from your evaluation link. Um, this is the link for if you're going to use and teach a financial literacy lesson from what Erica presented. Um, this is something that you can't fill out now, but that's the link to it. And it will also be in your email when we follow up with you guys tomorrow. But of course, if you guys have any questions, you guys know how to get in contact with us. <laughs> and, um, like the presentation, Amanda, it's like if they get a follow up email tomorrow, they have to follow up with you. Say that again. Um, would they, they would get the presentation with all the links and things like that. Like Yes, yeah, so the presentation will be included in the follow-up and they'll have access to the links. Yeah. guys see you later All right, bye. have a good evening thank you Erica you did a fabulous job All right. thank you. <laughs> have a good night see you later yes yeah. I'll go check the girls in <laughs> <laughs>